Water is the source of all living beings and living things. It is the source of life. Indeed, the world's oceans abound with the gift of life. But now we humans have harmed the life of this beautiful and vast blue creation. As we enter the third millennium, we are concerned about the state of our environment. We see a world in which development without restraint is imposing great harm on God's creation. We cannot help but observe the threats posed by nutrients, toxic chemicals, invasive species, overfishing, the transport of hazardous substances and other forms of pollution. His All Holiness, Ecumenical Patriarch Bartholomew, is the spiritual leader of more than 250 million Orthodox Christians worldwide. Dubbed the Green Patriarch, he has been the lead spirit in creating an extraordinary movement, religion, science, and the environment. The core idea was to bring together religious leaders and scientists, the best minds from these two often estranged communities, to discuss means to avert the headlong destruction of the planet we all share. Deciding to focus on our marine environment for both theological and ecological reasons, the idea of study voyages or symposia traveling around a specific body of water was developed. The unique organizational idea was to put some 300 religious leaders, scientists, environmentalists, journalists, and policymakers on board a ship. In each port, those locals involved in environmental issues would join the symposium. The first voyage traveled through the Aegean Sea, ending on the island of Patmos on the occasion of the 1900th anniversary of St. John the Theologian's Book of Revelation, that vision of the apocalypse relevant to today's threatening ecological catastrophe. The second symposium circled the Black Sea, rich in a bountiful history, but today a dying sea. Realizing that rivers bearing industrial and agricultural waste were responsible for most of the deadly pollution in the Black Sea, the next symposium traveled down the Danube in 1999. Here was evident the terrible destruction modern war can wreak on the environment. The fourth symposium sailed up the Adriatic, where the participants dealt not only with urgent local issues, but addressed the ethical aspects of the environmental crisis, seeking an environmental ethos. And the fifth took place in the Baltic, a sea divided by the Cold War, now searching for means of cooperation from all the littoral states. And the sixth symposium will be held in the Caspian Sea in 2005, under the joint auspices of His Excellency Kofi Annan, Secretary General of the United Nations, and His All Holiness, the Ecumenical Patriarch. The Caspian is the world's largest inland body of water, and holds the world's third largest reserves of oil. The symposium aims to support greater regional cooperation in the face of daunting transboundary pollution problems and the increase of health problems affecting local citizens. Talking about the history and political... The goal of the symposia has always been to be effective on two levels, the conceptual 
and the practical. Believing our concepts and attitudes towards nature and the environment determine our behavior, the symposia have sought to develop new concepts and attitudes that can change destructive human behavior toward the environment. An example of this was an idea presented by Metropolitan John of Pergamon in the first symposium. And it is important that we develop a, a sense of sin which is different from what we have been used to. And it's about time that we introduce into our way of thinking what we may call the sin against nature, sin against the environment. Until recently, the normal view would be, well, sin only concerns what you do to other people. But at Patmos, it was stated very clearly, what you do to the animals, to the trees, to the air, the earth, the water, if you misuse them, this too is sinful. The one statement that was made that pollution is a sin, I don't think anybody has a concept in this conference of how explosive a comment that is. And how, you know, you know, if that were taken right. and put in an advertisement all across America, mm -hmm. what a stir that would create and what a, a dialogue that would stir. create. It is very powerful. This, has been, this would be a success, uh, an immense success. It's a revolution. If we start now, if uh, those who go to confession, confess their sins and so on, if they start confessing sins against the environment, that for me will be the, the greatest reformation in Christianity. While the conceptual side was being discussed and developed in on-board sessions and working groups, the practical side involved onshore visits as well as presentations on board concerning specific problems of the area. Onshore visits included trips to problem areas as well as examples of successful solutions. Here in Estonia, garbage has been converted to methane gas to provide energy. And in Helsinki, Finland, this vast sewage plant can serve as a model for some urban areas like Russia's St. Petersburg, which pours untreated sewage into the Baltic. An example of the impact the symposia can have on a specific problem is well illustrated by the case of Porto Romano in Albania. When symposia participants visited the site in 2002, it was an environmental disaster. Chemical factories that produced pesticides and other toxic chemicals were abandoned in 1990. The toxic waste was simply left on site, in dumps and storage areas, and seeping into the Adriatic, poisoning the fish eaten by the population. The president of Albania, like other leaders, came on board and addressed the plenary session. Afterwards, he faced the participating journalists. I realize that it's a very expensive problem to solve. Yes. But um, there is a simple thing that could be done, which the, 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 the entire site could be, could be simply fenced off. No, I don't, I don't believe on the fence, because uh, if you have a, a local infection, it doesn't mean that this will be localized all the time. No one's suggesting that's, that's the total answer, Mr. President, but suggesting a way of stopping more people being I answer the question. A year later, on the Baltic, journalist Paul Brown explains what happened. It's now been the subject of a very large World Bank investigation and grant and is now being cleaned up. Well, one could argue that that would never have happened if the symposium hadn't visited the place and embarrassed the president into taking some action. The Patriarch has tirelessly met with national leaders to promote the green agenda. For it is the politicians and the policymakers who can effect legislation 
support international treaties and bring state power to bear on these problems through enforcement. The symposia, rather than being single isolated events, have built one upon the other and had a cumulative effect. Nowhere was this more evident than in the Venice Declaration signed by the Pope and the Patriarch. It represents the ideas and the goals worked out and developed in previous symposia. The joint declaration established the importance of protecting the environment and recognizes that while the responsibility lies with everyone, the most affluent societies must carry the greater burden. We often refer to an environmental crisis, but the real crisis lies not in the environment, but in the human heart. The fundamental problem is to be found not outside, but inside ourselves not in the ecosystem, but in the way we think. We thank His Holiness Pope John Paul II for the joint signing of the text on environmental ethics. Il nostro incontro, anche se a distanza. The Pope greeted the symposium with words of thanks and support. The Pope then signed the commitment. We're not dealing with any inevitable conflict between science and religion. We're dealing with a way of being in the world which is out of sympathy and communion with the creation. And this lack of sympathy is manifested in symptoms of ecological distress. To have religion become partner with nature and partner with people, and to have the real roots of religion kept alive for being a savior of humanity and nature rather than a threat to humanity and nature, a source of love and compassion rather than a source of hate and intolerance. Uh, for me, it's, it's like oxygen. The benefit is about linking the power of science and the power of religious organizations on the, side of, on the right side of a struggle. I think this whole series of symposiums on religion, science, and the environment have been absolutely historic without question have been some of the most dynamic and original confluences of people, institutions, and issues that have ever taken place on the environment. And I think they will have, without question, significance into the future. I hope that this symposium will send a clear message to the whole world that we are all in the same Noah's Ark regardless of our faith, nationality, ethnicity, philosophical or political views, and therefore we will be all saved or all failed on this planet Earth. What started as simply an idea has blossomed into a full-scale movement that has made and is making a difference. It has only been possible because of the countless volunteers the vast array of experts, the unstinting support of the Patriarchate, and those individuals and institutions who have financially supported these efforts. There is truly only one ocean with all its parts interconnected, just as there is only one spirit which unites us all. We invite all of you to join us 
in pledging to protect the oceans as an act of devotion, whatever your religion may be.